I can fly. Climb a mountain, fly away, land, repeat. But there is way more than hiking and flying in Hike and Fly. There is time spent studying the wind, the maps, the mountains and the conditions. There's cleverness and analysis and a ton of training. Hike and Fly is a lot of try and error. To shave off some grams from your kit, to be light as a feather without sacrificing any performance. To understand the least resistance line on the ground and in the sky. I can fly is for people who don't fear all the effort and pain of gaining all that altitude under a big pack. People who love all the sweat and effort and the prize that comes with it. If something embodies the high can fly spirit, it's the Red Bull X Alps. It's about riding the Alps from east to west and return, powered only by my legs or by the wind. The Red Bull X Alps is not only a competition, but primarily a challenge to myself. Hello and welcome everybody. Nice to be here and nice to see you tonight. I'm Elisa Deutschmann. I'm paragliding pilot and Saleva athlete. And the last two months I had the chance to meet all the Red Bull x Saleva athletes. And we had a really good time in the mountains. We were hiking, flying and um, I learned a lot from them. One is still missing and he has won the last six races of the Red Bull x -Alps. It's Kriegel Mara and I'm really stoked to talk to him tonight. Before he is joining and jumping in, um, I just want to say that you are able to ask questions during our conversation and we will answer them afterwards. So let's check and see if Kriegel is here. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Elisa. Good evening. Hello, Kriegel. Nice to have you here. I know that you're right now or already arrived in Wagrain. How are you and how you feel? Yes, today we had a long drive from Switzerland, but it was no problem. And uh, we arrived here fine and we had the inscription tonight. And yes, I feel good to be here again. Uh, after two years and I'm very happy that uh, the weather looks better than last time. Last time it was a strong south wind and today they flew uh, very high and I flew just in the evening a little bit and uh, I'm happy to start the preparation weeks. Wow, yeah, it's only five days left till the race starts. How was your preparation till now and do you did anything else than the last time? It was uh, similar because when I started the hike and fly competitions in 2009, then it was my first Red Bull X Alps uh, I did. And for me, it was completely new with the hiking part because I already fly competitions since 2002. Uh, so almost 20 years. And uh, in 2009, the hike part was for me a new challenge to improve my body, to improve also the team, to work as a team. And to cross all the Alps, it was a, a dream, and uh, we all, uh, yeah, we managed it, and it was a very great feeling to land in the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, it never stops this this uh, this great feeling to to be outside, to to challenge myself, to challenge uh, us in a team, and now to be here for the seventh edition, it's uh, it's really great because I. I know there is a new route, a new weather situation, new turn points, and it will be sometimes hard, but finally we will manage it and uh, we will be very happy after and we will learn a lot of new things. And for this, we are here. And also the preparation, as you ask, it was a lot mm -hmm. of uh, trainings, a, a lot of hike and fly, mountaineering, and we already learned a lot 
and even when it's uh, 12 years of hike and fly competitions and for this we do this also Ah, wow. So you planned a lot and you were really a lot in preparation and training. But I think there is way more than only planning. And um, also that your your mentally fit is super important. Do you train this? And if so, how you train to be mentally fit? Yes, for sure. My body, um, I, I train it hard because I, I know when it's not flyable, uh, it's easier when you're trained because otherwise your body gets destroyed very f quick and uh, it's not funny anymore. And uh, so I did a lot of power training in the gym in the winter and also mm -hmm. ski touring because I, I do uh, between 12 and 20 hours in a week sport. For example, this winter I did more than 100,000 meter ascent by ski touring and mm -hmm. um, it was always uh, nice conditions and also a lot of fun and this I did also to be ready now but in the spring I started to do a lot of hike and flies and also running running on the road because this is a complete different load on my feet on my body and uh, it have to be uh, well tested before the the hike and fly and what I did a bit differently to the last editions was the, the training, the power training for my legs in the gym. I did it until now, until the race. And I also did a lot of hikes, slowly hiking on the road with my paraglider on the backpack. Um, because to walk, it's a big difference to run. And in the race, mm -hmm. I can't run all the time. So I'm not powerful enough to do this two weeks every day. And I, I think I do 80% of the, of the distance I do by walking. And this walk, it's, it's especially a, a special load. And this I train more this year. Okay, wow. So maybe let's talk a little bit more about you prepare for any races or any project. I recently tried out a flight simulator and I was flying over the mountains and I really liked it because um, I have never seen this area before from above and it was super helpful for me. And now I'm interesting, uh, interested in if you are also used this and use this for races and to get to know the routes and the mountains. Do you have ever tried it out? I was uh, grew up in the mountains in Adelboden and a lot of people did um, mountaineering and I directly started to fly paragliding and I was 16 and I could climb in the thermals all above the mountains. So I, in one day, on a good day, I can cover a lot of peaks around the, the town and for sure it was a great feeling to do this uh, so easy and I really like to see the, the mountains and the earth from the top. And uh, yeah, for me, it always was interesting to discover new places, new mountains. And I tried to, to, to get this also as a pleasure. And when I started this hike and fly race, the X Alps, I just went it, um, a bit bigger. So I started in the east and I ended in, the, in Monaco and the Mediterranean Sea. And after the first race, I know already a, a big part of the Alps. And now I did it six times and I know almost every pass and every town and the street line at uh, the straight lines and the high mountains. So it's uh, it comes together more and more now how and it feels great for sure. Wow. So um, you have been to all the places to the new route. So everything you really know and nothing is unknown. <laughs> no, this, this is not possible because um, it's. 1,200 kilometers and it's uh, it's so many places where will be new. They are new turn points for sure. And this I really checked on the Google Maps or Google Earth. So mm -hmm. I, I, I hope to be prepared well. But what we more what we do more is to to prepare our strategy to mm -hmm. uh, think about on um, what we do in the daily race, because um, when I check the route or, uh, for example, a turn point yesterday, tomorrow it will be completely different because of the weather, of the wind, and especially this time also because of the snow. For example, last week on 2,000 meter above sea level, we had more than one meter of snow. 
and now the week was so warm and hot that the snow it's all almost gone so you can see here this is the actual um, picture uh, of the snow situation there is still snow and i think ne next week there is no snow at this height and uh, so we we uh, go step by step by a good preparation the good move and uh, i hope it will be possible to walk all over the mountains <laughs> Yeah, I hope that too. So a race is not always easy and funny. You all already said it. And um, how do you manage difficult situations? So I know um, on the last year, 2019, on day three, um, you had to land at Ipsy. And then in the evening, you were back in Landeck and completely in the front again. How is this possible and um, what happened there? Yeah, I can remember, and it's, it's also it shows a, a, a bit better our strategy because uh, we are a small team and we are diff different characters of people, and we have we have good good um, know how when we bring all this together. And what we maybe do is to plan small steps, and we go step by step. But with these small steps, we can be more sure that it works. And what we also try to do is always uh, to have a good plan B. So that means if plan A is not working, we can go directly to plan B without a new planning. And it needs more time to create these plans to, to be maybe not one. Um, it, it, we try to be two steps in front of our mm -hmm. uh, steps. And so it, it can happen what it wants and we, we, we are fast. But for sure, it's always... Uh, uh, a new adventure to prepare the glider in the morning, to hope for good terminals, to hope for good winds, and then to try. And also for the support, they follow on the ground. They never know exactly if I can jump on the next hill or not. And um, it's also interesting for them to follow me. And when we can do a good planning and we, and we find the good weather for this plan, then it's, uh, it's good fun. If not, then we say, okay, it's time to learn. And this is also interesting. Okay. And what mm -hmm. you ask on, on 2019, on day three, um, I got uh, a bit in a, in a too good mode. So the flow was so good when I flow direct um, Garmisch and Lermos. And this brings me to this situation. I, I, I really was shocked to, to realize that I push it too much and I have to land close to this Eibse. It's a beautiful place for sure. It's, uh, it's nice, uh, but a lot of forest and the wind was quite strong. And for, for the end, there was also the cable car. And I was uh, really in a hurry to land safe because there was a lot of people, a lot of cars and not free, free space to land safely. And on the end, I decided to land on the green field to be, to be safe, but it was um, really close and I was really not prepared for this because I, I was in a, in a wrong line and I, I was pushed down by the lee, by strong downwind. And it was because I was pushing too much and I was always um, thinking positive and I felt, okay, I will land in Lermo soon. And this, this um, made me not careful enough and it pushed me down and I landed and I was really uh, shocked and I had to pack my wing to, to climb up again to find the next takeoff and and it was really really hard moment because I, 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 I not like these situations and I was good in elite but with this mistake Maxim Pino he catch up and together we was walking from Lermos up to Grubigstein to this takeoff and we took off again in the evening and we had a nice flight together, but I was always thinking what I can do now to, to get a lead again. And mm -hmm. for sure I made a big mistake and normally it's, it's a big problem to get this out of my head. But because I was focused on the next steps, I, I create new, new options and I made a small shortcut. I, I land, I packed my wing, I hiked up for 20 minutes and I restart and this, this gave me an advantage later in the evening. And when I flew in the invalid direction Landeck, I was uh, 
a bit higher than Maxim. And finally, with the good backwind, I get a new lead. And it shows how it, how it works in the adventure race. You never know exactly what it is. But here I felt really comfortable because this shortcut worked. And mm -hmm. for sure it was not easy after this mistake I did two hours before. But um, I think this is one, one um, gift or one, one characteristic I can do well to switch from mistakes to new options in between uh, a short time. Wow, yeah. It's super cool to have different options and um, step by step is always good. And as you said, it's an adventure race and everything can happen. So it's good to be prepared for everything. And if something happens, then do something different. And how can you use all these for the upcoming races and for the next two weeks, which are soon are there? <laughs> this is a very good question because the last race it's already two years ago I did only two small hike and fly races this year so I'm not really um, in a good feeling how it works well uh, I have a normal uh, I have my old team I have my old logistic car and I have my old glider so everything I know well <laughs> but for sure it will be a new route new weather and for sure there is a a bigger field where is pushing very hard. This we see uh, clearly in the trainings and in, in the competition we already did, um, that, that the young pilots, they, they are prepared better than, than other years. And I'm, or, I'm already uh, 38 years old, so I'm not younger and uh, we will see how it works. But I know that, that in all the races, before the race, it felt really, uh, strange because um, we are good prepared and we, we are uh, full of energy and we really want to start and to push and after two days we are completely destroyed and tired and everything got slower and smoother and it's not about pushing it's more about surviving uh, step by step and hour by hour and and uh, yeah this this gives me the good feeling to to start on Sunday and then to, 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 to see step by step what we can do. And I'm really happy that the route goes along the pre-Alps um, direction Switzerland and then in the real Alps and to come back on the main ridge. And uh, I, I really look forward for, for these steps. First to, to cross to Chiemse and then to Switzerland and then crossing around the Mont Blanc and just mm -hmm. to, to see what, what we can do and to, to be healthy for sure, it's the main goal. And then we will see uh, how, how we can end in Zellamse. So are you nervous for the race or how, <laughs> how crazy nervous you are? <laughs> because it's already the seventh time now. <laughs> yes, it's the seventh time. Everybody thinks it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a normal move, but for me, it, it really feels great. Um, I'm, I'm a bit nervous. When I arrived today, because I felt now it's time to to start, and um, <laughs> I, I will be more nervous on Thursday when the prologue starts, and for sure more nervous when when on Sunday the new race starts, and to find the good balance between pushing and and moving smart. This 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 compromise maybe um, makes me more nervous than than other years because I. I already know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you are flying so long. How can someone else um, use all this experience, um, maybe who's not flying for that long? So maybe just started and also want to do a nice project, want to go on bivouac flying. How can you help them and what can you tell them? Yeah, it's a, it's a long story. Maybe we have another two hours. <laughs> but <laughs> no, it's, it's a good question. Maybe for an example, what, what is your next project? What do you want to do next? Oh, 
Yeah, I'm I'm biking from my home area with my paraglider and all my mountain gear um, to Switzerland. And I will climb, I will ride my bike, and then I will climb all high mountains, which I have never climbed before. And I will fly down and will keep on going. That's my next big project. And I dream so long for it. So I'm really um, stoked for it. <laughs> That's uh, nice because I, I always had my dreams and I tried to follow until I can uh, life, uh, alive it. And I think that this gives a lot of focus and motivation. And as soon you have a clear goal, you can try to, to fly better, to learn about your flying skills. And I always did this step by step. I was really young when I was uh, begin to learn um, the, to push my limits. I mean, I was 16 when I made my license and then I really flew a lot. And my focus was the competitions to see what the other pilots do and what I can improve. And then I want to learn step by step to be better and faster. And then I also did um, a lot of mountain hearing um, projects where I really learned about the nature, about the weather, about forecast and everything. I flew a lot of aerobatics with small gliders. To, to get the mm -hmm. good feeling when, when it not flies anymore and mm -hmm. about risk management and self-management. It gives me a lot of confidence to, to be better also for other projects. And in the end, it really plays together all this, this um, experience and depends of your project, of your goals, you, you have to prepare with more or less um, details, I, I, I guess. And mm -hmm. as more you can do what really you need in the end, as better you can be, and uh, then it makes more more fun or it makes it more safe. And I guess you you already did a lot of 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 uh, sports you bring now together to, for your project, so you can go switch from from one to one and. Like this, it will it will be a good um, mix, and it will uh, maybe stay with a good motivation during all the project. Because uh, I, I, I guess that you will have some some good moments, but also when yeah. when you feel hard with the with the with the weather, for example, with the conditions, um, sometimes you have to think about change your plans, and then you have to find a new goal, a new motivation immediately. Otherwise, you will stop and you come back home and think about, ah, it was not mm -hmm. a nice project. So as better you yeah. can switch your goals during the, during the project, uh, as more fun you have. Uh, that's a good thing because I think, yeah, on every project there are some moments where you are super stoked and then um, you're really low again. So step by step yeah. and having different goals is good yeah. and yeah you already said that you're flying since i think 22 years already um <laughs> that's right or yeah yes <laughs> yes that's super long but how was it for you you on the really beginning so when you start flying so i know the gliders were really different there and um <laughs> not as now so i think it's interesting how your start was yeah, um, when I was four, the paragliding sport came into Switzerland and also my father starts to fly and it feels always like um, unusual or magic when he came by paragliding and I really like this and I wanted to do this too. And also the birds, when they jumped and they fly away, it always was a, a big fascination and I, I dream about this feeling. And when I flew the first time, I was nine and I, I got a, a tandem flight and I immediately felt I really have to do this too. And when I flew the first time for myself in the flight school, uh, it, it feels also completely free. And now I can, mm -hmm. I can fly with my paraglider when the weather is good, almost uh, above all the mountains and I can cross more than 300k. I can fly until 12 hours a day and for sure it's uh, for me it's one of the 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 best moments to be free and to forget everything else and for sure I I also very happy that it's came up to my job 
that I really can do all day long, all week long, um, what I really like. <clears throat> For sure, it's not the same feeling now um, uh, compared to when I start, because it's uh, maybe like uh, other people go by biking on a cycle and it's it feels not really special but what i can do with this it feels great and uh, yes at the beginning was was a bit um easier because there was for example just one glider and uh, this time was one glider for flying everywhere and this time 20 years later we have different gliders different equipment uh, a performance glider a light glider a tandem glider aqua glider every Every single discipline has a, a specific equipment and it makes it more complicated, but it for sure gives more possibilities to do it more extreme. Yeah, and I think when you started the competition between all your orders were not as big as now, or how was it? Um, there were some competitions for sure, but um, I think now so many people are flying, it gets more and more. And um, I think it's a big point. Yeah, when I started to fly paragliding, the paragliding competition, like the World Cup, was very fam famous. And it was really a lot of people, they, they want to do this. And for example, my first participation on the Swiss Championship, I, had, I was on the waiting list because I was not good enough. And this time, it's, it's more... Uh, easy to to compete in a in a high level competition because the 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 interest maybe goes a bit down, but it's also because pilots can do more competitions. It means aer aerobatic competitions or like we have here the hike and fly competition. So in in the past, the people or the pilots did only one discipline, and now they do three or four disciplines, and it it spreads more over, and it is different. Mm. And also for myself. I really have to focus on the hike and fly because if I do too much, um, I'm not focused and I'm not good enough in one. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for all the information and um, to let us um, to show us all how you prepared for the race and um, your planning thing. I think now we can um, jump to the questions and maybe we have a look um, what we got and um, we will answer them. So, um, are you ready for the first question, Kriegel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always yeah. interesting what people want to know. <laughs> okay, so the first question is, why do you think no one has able to catch you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe because um, in, the, in the beginning, I was a, a good pilot already from the competitions. And I made a good preparation with my team. So Thomas, my supporter, was very good in organization, in mountaineering, and in, in self-management, in, self management, in risk management. And we could bring it together for a very high level. So we, I, I think we was one of the first team before the, there was just athletes with support. And with a team, we, we was able to bring more performance or we can bring a constant performance and we improved this year by year and I improved my, my body skills. I was more and more ready to run and to push more and more. And yeah, finally, it was also a bit of luck to, to get the, the moves because I always have to find a solution from, um, from the place for the weather. And these decisions, they have to be very quick, sometimes in between one minute. And I get really tired, my team gets tired, and to have always the right decision, it's not possible. So every team do, do or did uh, a lot of mistakes, and I was lucky to have the mistakes not on the bad moments, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so let's jump to the next one. Um, what kind of music do you listen to during x Ives and in your daily life? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> In my playlist, it's it's completely different. It's it's um, more electric music, rock rock music, a bit with the beat. And what I not do anymore, it's listening music during walking, 
because I, I know that it's, it can be really dangerous because I need to hear, the, for example, the traffic. I have to hear the, the nature when, for example, in the mountains, rocks fall down or something else comes in. So I, I, for this case, I not listen so much music, but um, for sure, if, 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 if I have to walk for a long time, I, mm-hmm. I, I play with music and um, I switch really differently. Okay, that's the same with me. I also like every kind of music. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And now the next one is how do you deal with uncomfortable situations in the air? Yes. Um, when I was young, I felt always comfortable because I thought it's normal. And now I, I'm come older and the wings, they come more and more powerful and more dynamic. So they have less lines. They reduce the lines so it can be more hard with with um, cravats and collapses and I know this and um, sometimes I think about what I should do but uh, in an in an analysis I, I see that maybe three or four percent of the flight time is uncomfortable because of of strong lift or strong sink or turbulences but this these are just some seconds and then after an hour other seconds and on the end it's maybe four percent and i think the other 95 percent i feel really comfortable and it gives me a really a lot of of nice feelings and new experience so in comparison of of this i say okay it's it's good enough and what i for example do it's i fly in the x alps a, a end glider instead of a, a competition glider and for me, it feels more easy to fly this wing, and it, I, I can feel more comfortable when it's turbulent, for example. So to fly an easier glider gives me more, um, yeah, a better feeling, and I can yeah. I can like the the flight more. Mm-hmm. That's um, yeah. I also have sometimes the feeling I, I started flying, but um, it's crazy when you I'm flying now a big glider and. Um, when I try the A glider, it feels so easy, everything, and still a B glider is easy, but um, I can feel and I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Okay, and we got the next. There is yeah. Maybe one thing more. When I was young, I, I felt that paragliding, it's very safe because I'm the pilot, I'm under the wing, and the wing is above me all the time because the wing is five kilo and I'm 100 kilo. And in, in my 20 years, I learned that the paraglider sometimes can go under me because it's so turbulent. And this gives me more respect and I pr- try to to find a better solution when I fly into a situation which is really dangerous that I can escape safely. So the plan B is to escape and when as soon my my feeling, my stomach feeling gets wrong, I have to escape for the plan B and as soon I have a plan B, I can follow the plan A. If I have not the really uh, plan B, then I should not go for the plan A because it's a, it's a, like a more dangerous situation. Okay, the next one is what is your all up weight during the competition? I'm 82 kilo and in the, in the backpack I bring 12 kilo maybe. It depends of the drink and the food. Um, so I fly my Omega 23 with 93, 94 kilo. So light. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and one more. Um, after winning six X Alps, is there any variation in what motivates you to win each race? It's not to win, it's, it's the experience we do in the preparation time and in the race. Because even, um, even I already won, the, the fascination, what we learned in the new game, in the new route, in the new situations, and then we explain after about this experience in presentations and speeches. We, I also do speeches to companies. I try to do a team building or team management in a company. And as more 
uh, hard situations I had in a competition as better I can explain what a team can do, for example. And it's a really big fascination to see also when I improved in the preparation time, how it works in the competition or it works or not. And um, I really, the person, they like to do competitions and then why not to do again and again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> And it's also about um, f having fun and having a good time with your team, as I said. And um, let's see if we're having another question. Um, who will finish in second place this year? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it depends uh, who is winning, because yeah. we already saw in the past that, that uh, it comes closer and closer. And for sure, I, I try to win, but... I know that Maxim Pino and Benoit, they are really strong athletes. They have a perfect team, a perfect glider. And there is Patrick von Kennel. He, he has um, unbelievable skills at the moment in the air. And maybe there is a rookie. We don't know about his performance now. And we will see soon that it's really efficient. Um, it also depends on the weather. If it's really flyable, the pilots will be in front. If it's raining, the, the runners will be in front. And... And um, yeah, finally, we hope that it's uh, also a question of of the right um, tactic in the end, because between Mont Blanc and Pitzpalu, it's a long, long uh, leg with different routes options. We also try to find shortcuts in the mountains as a mountaineering team. And if it's more efficient or not, we will see. But after Pitzpalu, it's it's quite short and then we will see. Uh, how it works but for us the most important is to to start safely and to to keep our rhythm and then to not to push to over push um, my body and then after mobile we will see what's what's the the good tactic and then to push in the in the end as hard we can and then we see the results i hope in uh, 12 days i guess the route is very long if we have uh, bad weather maybe it's 13 or 14 days until we see uh, who is first in goal. Yes, we will see. <laughs> Crazy, that long. And it, I think it's nice that on this point you have so many different ways where the athletes can go. So it's super yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, and we got one more question. Do you think your hike and fly ratio, sorry, I don't know, uh, will change drastically, drastically compared to the usual route? Um, what is the usual route? This, this is my question. Because um, we have the straight line the, the, in the race, the straight line, and we try to, to focus on this, but sometimes uh, an optional uh, extra way will be more efficient because of the flying um, conditions. And so this is also something which I really like to, to try out and to see what it works well and, and where, where I can bring my experience in. And, and so the, the new route is important for, for us. Maybe there is also the question what we think about the new route coming back to Tzell am See and not to end in the Mediterranean Sea in Monaco. And for this I say um, after six times arriving in the sea it's nice to, to, to end in the mountains. And for us, the, the last leg south of, of, um, of Grenoble, south of, of France, it was always a bit scary because of the, of the land. It was uh, not easy to take off, not easy to land. It was the, the, the breeze always was strong and, and it was r really rough conditions. And therefore, I'm quite happy to come back in the, in the smooth Alps in Pinsko. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, we will see. After two weeks, I can explain more about uh, what we felt. <laughs> yes, and I think it's nice that it starts in the Alps and it also ends in the Alps. And yeah. we got one another question about the other athletes. It's, do you ever fall asleep during... Oh, no, sorry. It's another one. Do you ever fall asleep <laughs> during older x Alps competitions? And what do you do to avoid it? So, yeah, 
sometimes we we get some experience back from 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 older X helps, but it's a completely new one, and and we notice that from each addition to the other, it, it it's it's completely new, or it can be completely new. We have a new new setup with the um, material with the glider. We have uh, I'm I'm maybe more ready, and we have new weather. We will have or we move differently, and and finally, for sure, it's it's uh, we have lots of ideas to to do it more smart. But in the end, it's a competition and an adventure and everything. It's like the two years ago, <laughs> but <laughs> for sure we have. Uh, experience and checklists to control ourselves. We also have a new boost box uh, a system that helps us to control ourselves and to manage okay. ourselves better. And finally, we are very interested now to see how it works in the next week. Wow. <laughs> and um, also one, another one about longer flight. Um, which kind of nutrition do you take during the longer flight? I, I really try to drink as lot as possible. It will be around six to eight, nine liters per day. And wow. the most important is to not only drink uh, water. Um, I really like to have um, drinks from companies. They, they mixed in uh, carburate and protein uh, to have also with the, with the liquid and um, also energy. And I really like to have uh, water with sugar and caffeine. To, to bring my body in, in, uh, in a good shape. And the mix is also important. And during a flight, I bring a bottle of one and a half liter with a lot of carbohydrate powder. So it's, it's similar like uh, one plate of pasta. And for this, I can fly six, seven hours and I, I not feel tired uh, too much. I can steer the, also the sugar. I mix in a bit Coke or or uh, I would say uh, Red Bull is good, <laughs> good to mix in to to be awake. But um, finally, I sleep around five to six hours per night. And after three days, I'm anyway complete tired or too tired. And it's um, it's really hard to, to have full concentration every minute during a long day. Yeah, I think so. It's super hard. And um, another one question is about um, injuries. Have you ever had any injuries or what problems were most serious for you? Yes, I had uh, I had often a hard landing, but after 16 years of uh, flying safe, <laughs> I had a hard landing. I broke and I broke my leg and it mm -hmm. was a hard ex experience. I had to go to the hospital and repair everything. It was a um, a break from from eight nine weeks and it was just before the x alps in 2015 and my doctor says it's not possible to run in 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 seven months again but i really was motivated to to have a good recovery and and i w was really hoping that it will work and it was just in time when i was uh, ready again and it it was a hard but important experience to know that my body, it's really uh, important that I really have to be careful that I always have mm -hmm. to land on the biggest solution, on the biggest and best landing I can do because the mistake was afterwards maybe that, that I tried to land as close to the train station as possible. And <laughs> we was on a tandem. So my passenger, um, I, I tried to hold my passenger and, the, and in the end it was just a bit too hard for my leg, also with my heavy okay. backpack. So it was... Uh, several uh, things they they come together and I broke my leg, but I realized that that I really have to be careful. And since this uh, experience, I never had a problem again. And I really try to to that it stays like this. Yes, that's good and it's important. <laughs> so important yeah. to be healthy and good. And yeah, and and we also got another one, and it's how did you prepare your stamina for the race? Stamina, I not checked. I not understand. That's funny, me either. It. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from Switzerland, and my English is not so good. But I always have a plan B. My plan B is yeah. the translation, and I can um, 
quickly check what it means. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's about the belly, I think, Samina. Maybe it's about, no, I don't know. No. <laughs> it's endurance, yes. I will check. But... In Switzerland, we say endurance. Thank you. And um, I, I really do a lot of um, ski touring in the base, in the base training, so quite slow. But um, in the end, I was possible to do uh, 1,000 meters in one hour walking up. And often I did this two times in a day and I got around 30,000 meters in one month. And until now I have 200,000 meters this year with ski touring and hike and fly, running and mountain biking. And in the end I also start to run down to, to, to uh, get more um, legs for, for walking and running down because this always uh, for, for a hike and fly pilot, it's not usual, but for the X-Alps in bad weather situations, I train this also to, to be more ready. And as I said, the hike on the road, not running, just hiking. And for this, I did uh, five times more than a marathon. Um, every month, for example, a hike from 45 to 60K, hiking with, uh, with sticks, so Nordic walking, and with my backpack with eight kilo. So this was my preparation. And after this, you like running down or <laughs> you still <laughs> don't like it? <laughs> um, it's, it's interesting, but after a long time, I mean, for 10 years, always walking up and walk flat, uh, it was my goal to run also down quite quick with, uh, with my trail running guys or friends. And I was um, pushing my, my goal and the goal was to run down 1000 meter in 20 minutes. And for sure at the beginning it was, it was no option and, and I was not understanding how the others can do it in 17 minutes. But on the end I was, I was able to do it in 20 minutes and I was, uh, for me it was a great feeling. It's almost like flying down with this speed. Mm -hmm. But I, I realized also that I really have to be co fully of concentration and that it's, uh, it's not a part of, of power, it's also part of um, coordination. And you have to be really good in, in a fast and precise steps. And it was, it was a good training to see, um, to improve also the skills. Okay. <laughs> I also have to train this. I don't like it so much <laughs> running down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, we got one more. Um, someone is asking about some tips on tourmaline from the master. So from you. I would, I would say I'm not a specialist in tourmaline because in the paragliding world cup, there are 120 pilots. Everybody flies more or less the same glider. And they are 10, 15 pilots, they always climb better. Like uh, Aaron Durogati or Mike, Michael Siegel. I not understand what they do differently. And they also, they are not possible to explain what they do differently to climb better. But I know they have just a better feeling. They feel better in a turn, in which place of the turn is more lift. And in the next turn, they go a bit more in this direction. So when you think about a corner, you think about in which corner of the turn is the best lift and in the next turn you shift more in this direction. And if you do this in every turn, you have more time in efficient climb. And finally, it's the same with the sink. If you feel a corner with more sink, you go away from this corner. And mm -hmm. for me, it's good to, to think about thermal. It's not like a lift. It's more like bubbles, like when you do um, boiling water. You see the, bo the bubbles comes up in the, in, the, um, in the boiling water. And like this, I, I, I understand the thermals. And so you have to fly from bubble to bubble and to try to catch another one. And if the bubble is away, you have to look for a new mm -hmm. one and not to stay on this place until the next is coming because in this time you lose altitude. So uh, thermaling, it's really un understandable because it always changed and after 22 years of, of flying I not understand how it works really but I know <laughs> that if it's not working on this place you have to go to the other place and it, it will work and yeah. don't ask why don't do it uh, don't ask why just do it <laughs> okay have you ever 
close your eyes while turning to have a better feeling. I did it the last time and I know you should not do it, but it was super nice <laughs> for me. No, I, I really like to have my Vario with my voice, with the beep, and I focus on this beep. And when I hear the differences in the corners, I try to go more in these directions. And if I do this with open or closed eyes, it doesn't matter. But but um, sometimes I, I fly tandem without a variometer. So just uh, checking the horizon to, to see if it climbs or not. Sometimes it's super easy to feel the lift. Sometimes you can't feel. And uh, it not really helps me to to be more efficient. So the, the, the only <laughs> thing I, I do is to fly competition and to compare with the others and to to listen to my variometer and then I can be more efficient. Okay, and uh, we got another one about the weather. Um, which weather portal do you use when planning? Um, in the past it was it was the REC10 top task from the German uh, weather forecast, but now we have a Swiss, they made a, they made a new app it's called Xterm, and I have all my apps on my phone, and I can I can use this app for the thermal activity and for the wind and for the clouds, and this is a calculation of different of so many fa parameters factors, and it gives me a, a forecast for the next five days, and uh, this is not too bad forecast, but in the end I always have to to plan as as um, flexible as possible and to try and also for the wind i often check uh, windy the windy app and then in switzerland we also have this meteo swiss app where we can have good prognosis but if i were to really go for a big flight i have uh, more details more uh, measurements where i can check but it needs hours and in the excel we not have this and it's also not so important because we anyway stay on one point and we have to do the best from this point to the next and then the weather forecast is not so important as if you go to a place to have a nice flight. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie and another yeah. one is um, about in this edition are there any athletes who could surprise and make a good race? We talked already about it a little bit before but um, yeah maybe some more words about this. Yeah, it's always very difficult because um, you have the veterans, you know already well, um, Maxim Pino, Benoit Otter and Simon Obrauner, for example. And we have also new athletes like Thomas Friedrich. It's, he is unbelievable. He's young, but already so good. He competed last year in Switzerland with me and it was really strong. And if you have a good team and comes into a good flow situation, he will do for sure very good as well. And uh, the others we don't know well. Also, uh, for me, it's difficult because not many of the new of the rookies, they did a lot of competitions and without competitions, you never know mm. what they will do in a, in a race like this. But it's I, I feel really that, that this makes the x -Alps so unique because of this unknown you don't know about the athletes, you know, don't know about the weather in the, in the routes and 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 uh, yeah, we will follow all the athletes in the live tracking as well to see what they can do uh, in the yeah. same situation as I do. And what about the girls? Are you afraid of them that someone is catching you? <laughs> because and we're having and three or how many girls are in this race yes. this year? We have three, but Kinga, it's um, it's not coming in the race. Um, the other two, I, I know a bit, and they can fly really good with the competition gliders, and they can beat also me. And Yael, for example, she flew more a bigger distance than me. I, I just flew 515, and she flew 552. So it's uh, <laughs> it's really interesting. And finally, I don't know. Um, why? But but I, I guess that that the girls have have uh, for sure a lightweight problem. The gliders are quite big and they are quite light. This this is a is a one disadvantage they have. 
and for sure also the the backpack it's almost the same weight than I have and I'm 82 kilo and they are 55 or 60 and this is unfair I feel and for these yeah. two factors they will lose for sure a little bit but they also can have good fun and good goals and uh, why not have good if you have good flying conditions they will also be very fast in the air I, yeah. I believe I also believe that. So now the last question for today, and it's what do you think are the biggest challenges of this year's new route? <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> um, it, it, it was always the same. I, I thought about challenges and in the end it was flyable and it was not even a challenge. <laughs> and <laughs> on parts where I thought it's easy to fly, I had to walk all day and it was a hard challenge. <laughs> so this year I, I not think about challenges. I just think about plans in case of it's flyable or in case it's not flyable. And mm -hmm. for this, we know that in, in uh, Chiemse, for example, it's a, a long leg against the Bayerish wind it will maybe a, a first uh, challenge. Then the pre-Alps, until the Switzerland are for me a bit a challenge because walking on the road in bad weather for for me it's not the problem because it's easy for calculation and easy to support to compete in the high mountains it's easy because you can walk up and you can launch almost everywhere and fly uh, cross country taking shortcuts but the most difficult part is this uh, medium layer with forest, with no takeoffs, with wind and lee sites. And this um, part until Switzerland is, is exactly like this. So for me, it, it looks challenging, especially the last part for crossing the uh, Rhine Valley direction, uh, Santis turn point. And after it looks more easy until turn point um, Mont Blanc. Or the Mont Blanc for sure, it's high alpine. It depends of the wind and the base, the cloud base. If it's flyable well, like last week, it will be a one hour journey and it will be very nice for sure. If it's raining or the wind is too strong, it will be more than one day alpine walking and it will be a challenge for sure. And then yeah. for sure to come back, uh, it it's, uh, it's depends on the line. It will be a challenge to find the best line with the weather we get. And finally, yeah, we come back to Kronplatz and then I hope the challenges are over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will see how everything will go. And um, I wish you good luck, Riegel, for the race and a lot of fun and that you have a really good adventure time out there and also a nice time with all of your team. And we will see you on Sunday. Much. Yes. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone else who watched um, this tonight. I hope you liked it. And um, don't forget to follow the race on all the Saleva channels. And yeah, I think we wish you now a nice evening and goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Thank you very much, Elisa. Thank you to Saleva for this great evening to, to make this support with this talk. And uh, not do not compare always with X Alps because it's the highest level of, of what you can do. And I wish you, Alisa, a nice project with your hike and fly, bike and climb uh, combination. For sure, it will be a good experience. And uh, I wish all of you good goals and have fun with what you do. Always with the Saleva equipment, it will be more fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a nice evening and see you on Thursday, 10 o'clock with the prologue. <laughs> yeah. Bye.